Hi there, uh, it's me, Max from Isolation Game, and today we continue doing someone else's tutorials to get better in dreams. And uh, today's tutorial is wiring and logic from Dreams Workshop. I didn't do that before, so let's jump in. In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about the exciting world of logic. Pay no attention to Cuthbert. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I promise. Let's check out the scene. See the buttons on the platforms in front of our good friend Connie? They activate the bridges that will take her to the next platform. At least that's what they're supposed to do. To get them working, you'll need to connect them to the gadgets that control them. You can't see gadgets when you're in play mode, but they let you do all sorts of useful things in edit mode. You can tell gadgets apart by their color and icons. Green gadgets are sensors and inputs. This one is what we call a trigger zone. It's one of the more versatile gadgets. It can trigger other gadgets when it detects something in the scene. Like in this case, Connie standing on the button. Hi, Connie. If you select the gadget with X, you'll be able to see its detection zone. That's it, right there above the button. Press the circle button to deselect the trigger zone and let's look at the next gadget. Pink gadgets are movers and outputs, meaning they make things happen in the scene. This particular gadget is a rotator and it's connected to the first bridge. Click R3 to start time and let's see what it does. Well, not a lot right now by the looks of it. That's because the rotator is switched off. You can tell because the gadget is dim at the moment. But if we connect these two gadgets together, we can turn the rotator on using the trigger zone. In the next step, I'll show you how. I already know. So it's pretty easy. I've done this kind of tutorial before because I needed to make a, a button for my game and I was so eager to do that I uh, skipped all the tutorials and started figuring this out myself. Anyway, this will work. <gasps> no, it doesn't. Why? What's wrong? Something's not working. is here also wiring is here too so what's wrong <laughs> well maybe he did something I don't know Let's watch. Before we start connecting things, make sure you can see both gadgets. You'll notice they have ports sticking out of their sides. Ports on the left are inputs, and the ones on the right are outputs. Ah, of course. Hover over course. the output I port. Know. I know what I did wrong. So, uh by selecting this and pressing triangle I can delete the wire and I connected it to to speed output of this gadget but I need to connect this to power and power is here at the button I guess this will work 
now. Yes. Ah. So let's watch what this guy is gonna tell us. On the trigger zone now. You'll see the word detected appear. That means that when the trigger zone detects something, this output will send a signal. Before it can send that signal to the rotator though, we'll need to connect them with a wire. So hover over the detected output and press R2 or X. You'll notice your imp is now tethered to the port by a wire. Power ports have appeared on the gadgets too. It's these ports that switch gadgets on or off. Okay, drag the wire over to the rotator gadget. Now hover over the power port at the bottom, then press R2 or X. Once X is the gadgets better. are connected, the wire will disappear automatically. That way, your scene won't get cluttered. After all, you don't want wires all over the place. You can see the wire again by hovering over either gadget. Okay, pressing time X. to test that connection out. So let's switch over to play mode in the options menu. That's more like it. Now the trigger zone detects Connie when she stands on the button and activates the rotator on the bridge. As soon as she steps off, the rotator stops working. You can use the button to get the bridge lined up with the platform. Once Connie can make it to the second platform, you can head back to edit mode and move on to the next step. Yeah. Again, I can't stop being pretty much obsessed with how all those things uh, available for kids right now uh, in my childhood you have to uh, ma make real electronics for such things to be explained first of all explain uh, you need to buy a lot of stuff to be able to mm, make a rotator you will need uh, you uh, could use some little engine to make a rotator and uh, you had to uh, physically wire stuff to make real things to work like that and I and I didn't have my, my family didn't have that much money and uh, I wasn't able to test and understand uh, programming logic for simple electronics in my childhood that's why maybe I didn't become become an engineer or something or maybe even a programmer in the end but that would be awesome to have such things and I'm, I envy those young kids who have it right now uh, <laughs> and I also d died died a little bit and I'm reborn again <laughs> So let's see what's next. Now that we've connected the rotator, let's take a look at the second platform. See the yellow gadget on its side. This gadget isn't a sensor or an output. It's called a microchip. Microchips are used to organize logic in scenes. You can think of them as boxes of gadgets and wires. Let's have a look inside. Hover over this one with your imp. Hold L1 and press X. It's just like scoping into a group of objects. This window is the microchip's canvas. And if these gadgets look familiar, it's because they're two rotators. Each one controls half of this jointed drawbridge. Try to connect the output from the trigger zone to the power ports on the rotators. You can create multiple wires from the same output. 
Or you can clone wires in the scene by holding L1, then grabbing them with R2. Clone the wire near the rotator to create a new wire from the trigger zone. Once you've connected the trigger zone to the second rotator, switch over to play mode and make sure it's all working. Okay, jumping on the button now will activate the trigger zone and raise the drawbridge so that you can cross over the... Oh, wait a minute. The bridge has dropped down before Connie could cross. That's because the signal to the rotator stopped sending as soon as Connie stepped off the trigger zone. Switch back to edit mode and rewind time with L3. In the next step, I'll show you how to make signals stay on. I also know how to do that. And I'll be faster than him explaining this little thing to you. Or maybe being wrong again, but uh, you should edit the trigger zone. You should edit the trigger zone. No, the trigger, trigger, trigger. I don't know, it doesn't work. But uh, I guess there is a detection option. Uh, Numbers detected, scene element to detect, detected. Well, I was wrong. There is no, no simple way to do that. I guess the explanation will be a little bit different than I expected. If we want the bridge to stay up, we'll need to add a gadget between the trigger zone oh, yeah. and the rotator to keep it activated. We can do this with a counter. So let's go into the assembly menu. Press square to open it if it's closed. Select the gadgets menu with X. You'll find the counter in the logic and processing section. The gadgets in this menu take an input signal and change it in some way before sending it on. Go ahead and select the counter its icon is a tally counter. Now you can see the gadget on your imp. Hover over the microchip and it will snap to the canvas. Press R2 or X to stamp the counter onto the microchip, then press circle to unequip it. The counter gadget counts up or down whenever it receives a signal through its inputs. By default, it starts its count at zero and has a target of one. Once it reaches that target, it sends a constant signal through its counter full output port. Before we connect it though, let's tidy up the wires connecting the trigger zone to the rotators. Just hover over them and press triangle to delete them. Now press R2 or X over the detected output of the trigger zone to create a new wire. Connect it to the increase count input port on the counter. That's the port with the plus sign icon. Now when the trigger zone is activated, the counter will go up to one. And this is the important part. It will stay at one even after the trigger zone deactivates. Now hover over the counter full output port of the counter. This port sends a signal when the counter reaches its target. Create a wire with R2 or X and connect it to one of the rotator's power ports. Then do the same for the other one. Time to switch to play mode and try out our new connections. It works. When you're happy everything's working as it should, return to edit mode and move on to the next step. Well, that's cool. 
but I thought, I thought, 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 that uh, they had some something simi similar inside the trigger zone for some reason. There is a, mm, a number required now, it's different. So I guess I was wrong. Okay, let's continue. Just one more bridge for Connie to cross. As you can see, we have another microchip on the platform. So let's open it up. Hover over it with your imp, hold L1 and press X. Okay. Looks like we have everything we need here. But Connie's an adventurer, so how about we make this last bridge more challenging? Adding a timer to the logic should get the adrenaline going. Once Connie activates the button, she'll only have a few seconds to cross before the bridge drops back down. Let's head back to the assembly menu. If it isn't already open, press square. Then go into the gadgets section. You'll find the timer in the same place as the counter, the logic and processing section. Its button has a clock face on it. Now go ahead and stamp the timer gadget onto the microchip with R2 or X. Then unequip it from your imp with the circle button. Now let's take a closer look at the timer's inputs and outputs. You can see their names by hovering over the ports. The first input is a start timer port. Once this receives a signal, it will start the clock. The second one is reset timer, which sets the time back to zero. Over on the output side, we have timer finished and timer output. Timer finished sends a signal when the timer reaches the required number. It's set to five seconds by default. Timer output is a little more sophisticated. The signal it sends represents the timer's current progress. If, let's say, it's only halfway to its target, the signal it sends will be half strength. So how do we connect this so the bridge only stays up for a few seconds? Well, we need the bridge to be raised while the timer is running. So create a wire on the timer output with R2 or X. Remember how we used the counter on the previous platform? We can use one here too. Just like before, connect the wire to the counter's increase count input. Then connect the counter full output to the rotator's power port. Time to see if it works. Click R3 to test it out. As you can see, since the timer isn't connected to a trigger yet, the clock starts ticking as soon as we play the scene. The bridge goes up, but doesn't drop down when the timer finishes. That can only mean one thing. There's a problem with the logic. If you'd like to figure it out for yourself, feel free to check the gadgets and see what's wrong. Or move on to the next step and we'll go through it together. Okay, now you, you're challenging me for this. Okay. Ooh. I guess we need a trigger zone to start the timer and also uh, we don't need this we will need to connect this to this oh we still need this okay I guess I'm right. Let's check. My brilliant logic bridges. Whoop. But it doesn't go down. Now it doesn't go down. Something's wrong. I'm not right. The guy's in the elevator. Elevator. What should I do? Okay. Uh, 
timer output timer finished reset reset timer timer finished ah timer finished we need to connect also to this crease count huh well rewind Whoop. oh yeah it, it did that you see you, you saw it it worked so when I press one two three four five and down Woohoo! I'm not stupid maybe just a little bit So let's take a look at why the bridge stayed up after the timer finished, instead of going back down. Remember how we used the counter earlier to remember the signal from the trigger zone? Well, now it's remembering the signal from the timer, so we need to make it forget that once the timer finishes. Let's go over to the counter gadget. Hover over the inputs to see their names. This one here is reset count. It'll put the counter back to zero, which will turn off the rotator. So all we need to do is connect it to the timer, but to which output? Aha! There we go. We can use the timer finished output. Hover over it and create a wire with R2 or X. Then stretch the wire over to the counter and connect it to the reset count input. I did but we also need to different. reset the timer, otherwise the logic will only work once. So let's get another wire from the timer finished output and connect this one to the reset timer input. Well, You'll recognize it by the rewind symbol on it. Basically the same. All we have left to do is to connect the trigger zone to the start timer port so Connie can activate it. Okay, yeah, but they that was a reset lot of connections. Instead of minus. So before we test it out, let's go over the logic we've made. First, Connie activates the trigger zone, which sends a signal to start the timer. Once the clock starts running, the timer output becomes active. This tells the counter to count up. That then turns on the rotator and raises the bridge. Now this is where the really clever stuff kicks in. After five seconds, the timer finishes its count, which activates the timer finished output. This in turn resets the counter to zero, cutting the signal to the rotators and lowering the bridge. And let's not forget, it also resets the timer, so the logic could be triggered again if Connie didn't cross the bridge the first time. <sighs> Isn't logic exhilarating? Take your time digesting all that. Logic is easier to read if you route your wires neatly. Grab wires with X to change their paths. You can also move the gadgets around by grabbing them with R2. Funny. Feel free to test it out in play mode, but don't leave the scene just yet. I have one more thing to show you. Yeah, this... This is pretty neat. Okay, let's watch what you want to tell. So, on the third platform, we've set up a timer that makes the bridge drop after five seconds. But I think that might be too easy for a seasoned pro like Connie. Let's make it a little bit more challenging. First, if you're in play mode, switch back to edit mode and rewind time with L3. 
Let's move in closer to the microchip with the timer. You can use the grab cam R1 to move your view. Now I'll show you how to tweak a gadget's settings. Hover over the timer gadget, hold L1 and press square. This tweak menu contains the settings for the timer. Hover over the sliders and buttons to see their names. The top slider sets the target time for the timer. If we lower this setting, the bridge will stay up for a shorter time. To adjust the value, hover your imp over the slider, then hold X. Use your imp to drag the slider left or right. Set it to around three seconds. It doesn't have to be exact. If you're a stickler for precision, you can adjust the slider incrementally using the up and down directional buttons. Just hover your imp over the slider and press up or down to tweak the value. In fact, why don't we make things really interesting for Connie? Let's set it to 2.5 seconds. You can close the tweak menu now by selecting the cross in the top corner with X. Or you could use a shortcut. Just hold L1, then press circle while hovering over the menu to close it quickly. The same shortcut works for closing microchips. Give it a try now. Hold L1, then hover your imp over the microchip and press Beautiful. circle. Time to test out the scene in play mode. If you have any problems crossing that last bridge, you can always tweak the timer again in edit mode. Remember, you just hover over the gadget, hold L1 and press square to open its tweak menu. When you're all set, take Connie to the last platform and walk through the door to complete this tutorial. Well, thanks for watching. That was some wiring logic and be a dreamer. <laughs>